Hello boys and girls, it is Bible time. Today we're going to hear a story about a missionary journey that our friends Paul and Barnabas went on. But before we do that, let's pray and get our minds focused on the Lord. Hands in the air, hands in our hair, hands ready for prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for a new day to serve you, worship you, and learn about you. I pray that we will be good listeners and that you will bless us this day and help us with our tests and our schoolwork for the day. And in Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls. So, like I said, this is a story about Paul and Barnabas on a missionary journey. Now remember, Paul's name used to be Saul, right? His name used to be Saul, but now he's Paul. He changed his name after he became a Christian. So now he's Paul. So remember, they're the same person. He just changed his name. All right? So let's hear about their missionary journey. Now, remind me, what do missionaries do? They tell others about Jesus. Yes, very good. So they were going on a trip or a journey to tell others about Jesus. Let's hear what happens. The Holy Spirit told the leaders of the church in Antioch. Can you say Antioch? Hmm. That's a place, and there's a church there, to set apart Paul and Barnabas to do a special work. Boys and girls, God had a special plan for Paul and Barnabas, and he has a special plan for you guys, too. The Lord wanted Paul and Barnabas to be missionaries. He wanted them to travel and tell the good news of Jesus to people far away. Now, missionaries can go far away, like Paul and Barnabas are going to, but they can also tell others about Jesus right here right where they're living, right in New Jersey, right in your neighborhood. First, Paul and Barnabas went to the island of Cyprus. That's actually where Barnabas was from, the island of Cyprus. Can you say Cyprus? The Bible has some really cool places. Their names are really cool sounding. They took John Mark as their helper. Okay, so now Paul, Barnabas, and John Mark are traveling together. They went all over the island preaching Christ. One day, an important official named Sergius Paulus. Can you say Sergius Paulus? Sounds very fancy. He's a very important official, so it sounds very fancy. He called Paul and Barnabas to come and teach him the word of God. So he wanted to learn about God. Well, that's perfect because um, Paul and Barnabas were trying to tell people about God. A man named Elamas was with the official. Okay, so Elamas was with Sergius Paulus. Elamas was an influential false prophet who taught lies. So he was influential, which means a lot of people listened to him. And he was a false prophet, which means that he would tell lies. He would not tell the truth about God or about things in the world. He would tell lies. Okay, so Elamas, this false prophet, is with Sergius Paulus, who wants to learn about God. Okay, let's see what happens. Elimas worked against Paul and Barnabas. He tried to turn this official away from trusting Christ. So he was trying to turn Sergius Paulus away from trusting Christ. Uh-oh. That's not good. We want people to trust Christ, but this guy, Elimas, was working against Christ. Paul being filled with the Holy Spirit, told Elimas that because he was working against the Lord, he would become blind. Immediately. Boom. Just like that. Everything went dark for Elimas. He had to find someone to lead him around by the hand. Close your eyes. Open them. So it was just like that. Just whoo. Then he was blind. So I'm going to snap. As soon as I snap, close your eyes. Okay? Open your eyes. You can see. Yay, 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 yay. Just like that. Immediately he was blind. He couldn't see. Okay, you can open your eyes again. So then someone had to lead him by the hand. Now, did Paul do that with his power? Does Paul have, like, really cool powers and he can do that? No, it wasn't Paul's power. It was God's power. Because Elimas wasn't just working against Paul and Barnabas. He was working against God and Jesus, working against them. So then God caused him to become blind so he could see God's power. Sergius Paulus watched all of this take place. He had heard Paul and Barnabas preach about Christ. When he saw Elimas go blind, he trusted in Christ. So he saw God's power and decided, wow, I, knew, I need to trust in Jesus. Paul and Barnabas left the island and sailed to Asia Minor, which is north of Cyprus. Remember on a map, north is 
up like that um, to visit some more cities. In all the cities they visited, they boldly preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's that word, boldly, right? They weren't afraid. They did it boldly, without fear. They would go first to the synagogues, the meeting places of the Jews, and preach to their own people. So Paul and Barnabas were both Jewish. So they would go preach to Jews first in the synagogues. But as soon as the Jews rejected Christ, Paul and Barnabas would go out and preach to the Gentiles. Remember, Gentiles are people who are not Jews. Many Jews and Gentiles trusted Christ as Savior and were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. But many people refused to believe. They said, no, we're not going to believe that. In some cities, Paul and Barnabas were mistreated and even stoned. When you're stoned, that's when people throw rocks at you. But God kept them from being killed. God had a special plan for them still. He had more work that he wanted them to do. So he, kept a, he protected them from being killed. They ended their trip by going back to each city they had already visited. They made sure that each new church had godly men to lead it. They prayed with the new believers and encouraged them in their faith. Then they sailed back to Antioch. That's where we started out. They sailed back to Antioch to tell people in their home church all that God had done. So, boys and girls, at the beginning of the story, God told the leaders at the church in Antioch that Paul and Barnabas should go be missionaries, right? So then the church leaders sent them off. Really, God sent them because he was the one who said that they should go. And they went off to the island of Cyprus. And then they went to Asia Minor. And they were telling people about Jesus. And lots of people knew, uh, trusted Jesus as their Savior and became saved, which is awesome. There were some people who did not as well and who um, persecuted and hurt Paul and Barnabas because of what they were doing. But boys and girls... When someone, if you tell someone about Jesus and they reject it, they're not really, they're not rejecting you. They are really rejecting Jesus. And sometimes people don't realize that. They're really rejecting Jesus. That's what happened with Elimas. He was working, he wasn't just working against Paul and Barnabas. He was working against Jesus. And then he was struck blind to show God's power. Boys and girls, what is the only way to salvation? Is it through, you know, being a good person? Is it through, like, doing your chores, making sure you listen? No. The only way to salvation is trusting in Jesus' death and resurrection. Trusting that those two actions, when Jesus died on the cross and when he rose from the dead, that they take away our sins. That is the only way for us to to be saved, boys and girls. And that's what we need to be telling others. And then, if God sends us to do something awesome, like if we go somewhere, it could be nearby, like a summer camp, it could be farther away, and we are telling people about Jesus, we should come back and tell other people what God did through us. For example, sometimes I go to, usually in the summer, I'll go to um, the Dominican Republic on a missions trip, or I even go to a camp that's in New Jersey, uh, like a summer camp, and I'll tell people about Jesus. And then when I come back from those trips, usually at my church, they want to hear about how things went. So I'll tell them, you know, if people got saved or the different kinds of things we did. So boys and girls, if God sends you to do something, even if it's not very far away, if he sends you to do something, then we should tell others, what happened when he sent us to do it? Because that can be encouraging to other believers. So boys and girls, I hope that you can be like Paul and Barnabas and go and tell others about Jesus. Whether it's far away, like they traveled far, or if it's nearby. Boys and girls, that is the best thing we can tell people. Telling them about Jesus. And then don't forget to come back and tell others how God used you. Boys and girls, that is the end of our Bible lesson. I hope that you enjoyed it and you got to see God's power in this story, which is really cool. We love seeing God's power. We've been talking about that this week, how powerful God is, how he's um, um, omnipotent, right? He's all powerful. All right, boys and girls. So I hope you have a great rest of your day. If you can, think of someone that maybe you can tell about Jesus this weekend. Have an awesome day, boys and girls.